Okay. <laughs> as Fantastic. You do. Yep, as we do. <laughs> Bring us in only for him to immediately leave. Just like my dad when he went for those cigarettes. He'll come back. He'll come back. I heard the car start. <laughs> I heard it. He'll he's coming back, guys. He's coming back. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> always. You're always the happiest to be here. Alright, let's see. Alrighty. Not a fucking cop. Co Not a cop. Not a cop. Alright, I need Stetson and Copy, copy All McDo. Right. Why do you need copy? Stetson and copy McDo. That's the name of my police officer. Mm -hmm. There's no police officer. Sure. Danny Copperfield. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> right in the face right. hole. I figured it out. It was Zoom. Yeah. It's oh, I had that problem Zoom. before. Yeah, yeah. It was Zoom was fucking with Audacity. Mm -hmm. That son awesome. of a bitch. Mm -hmm. Son of a bitch. Son of a this bitch is the last time you'll fuck with audio settings in this town. That's right. Son of a bitch must pay. <laughs> yeah. right. oh, Somebody yeah. was telling me they went to a uh, uh, convention and uh, Baby from Big Trouble Little China was there. Like the I semi told you that was a brothel and it was me. Oh. I'm going to put some soda in this vodka. Oh, soda. I should have got a fucking soda. soda. I spilled my soda you know in what? my I'm lap. Gonna get, I'm going to get me a fucking soda. Huh? Everybody thinks I peed my pants, but I didn't. Soda. I just spilled my soda. Oh, no. Hey, Sapper Supreme. You finally what? made it. What's up, stranger? <laughs> How are you? Hey. How goes it? Good to see you. Yeah, ch chances are uh, better than not that I'm not moving to Georgia now. Oh, shit. <laughs> mm, shit, fuck. Oh, Charles God. sent me his pictures, and I was like, nah. We didn't have soda, so I brought myself some cheese dip. <laughs> mm. Mixed cheese water with dip it. is like the soda of the sea. Yeah. Just gonna, That's awesome, Sapper. I, yeah. got, I got boiling water. I'm just going to put in some cheese dip. <laughs> boiling water has bubbles. <laughs> it's yeah. true. Bubbles? <laughs> Bubbles. Just kidding. I got myself a sapper and sasper together again. Is that a sarsaparilla? It's That's... a white birch beer. Ooh, birch beers are yummy. Sasper yeah. is a white birch beer. Since I, I can't drink alcohol, I'm drinking soda now. Like oh. a fucking degenerate. <laughs> you know, I n I've never had sarsaparilla in my life. Oh, they're pretty uh, boring. That's that's what I'm gonna guess. Is it There's a reason they fell out of favor in the what? 1910s. <laughs> There's a shop in Gettysburg that sells them, but I've never had them because they're like ten dollars a bottle, and I'm like, I don't know, I'm not that carrying. We're not worth it. Mm -mm. Ooh, I'm gonna use my special new dice. I hope you rolled nothing but ones on. But this. <laughs> it's their fancy gemstone dice. Oh. Use my little dice roller to protect them. They're amethyst. Mm -hmm. They're amethyst. Uh, didn't she get banned? <laughs> she <laughs> never gets banned. <laughs> she never gets banned. temporarily. Yeah, it's only ever. Hey, Sniper Wolf on YouTube went to somebody's house what? and doxed them to five million Instagram followers and was like, "Should I go inside?" What? And YouTube's like, "Uh, we no, no. longer control things that are off platform." Even though ten ten days ago it specifically said off platform things we can ban you for too. What? Yep. Oh yeah. Jesus Christ. Did I mean that chick. Did they uh. have a gun? Uh. Uh. Well, her it's name is Sniper Wolf, so you yeah. know. Well, I mean that's the whole. It's point. with three S's, by the way. She just steals content, but not where you think. She does. That's Sniper Wolf one more has three S S's. than the Waffen SS. Should only be one S in Sniper Wolf. Not no, if you're Sniper Wolf. Sniper Wolf. Sniper. Not if you're a German Sniper Wolf. Hmm. Uh, mm. Is that the? I think that kind of feels like that might be what it is. Oh, I forgot about this MTF guy. Uh -huh, I can make him a site security. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's start so we can go home. <laughs> Hold on.
Previously on Botched. Feel like we took somebody hostage? That's the only thing you remember? <laughs> it was so My, long ago. My mobile was task force. Last week? Well, Alpha 173 used oh, Team yeah. Botch. Yeah. <laughs> Infiltrated a hot zone full of nasty flesh zombies. We killed a bunch of cultists and stole their briefcase and their son, name of, name of Carl. Brought him back to our house. It's not kidnapping if you, you're the one with the gun. Welcome back, junior researchers, to the 10th episode of our 8th season of Botched, a D&D podcast. Um, you guys, so we're going to start off a little bit after last time because, you know, the mobile task force has returned back to base, home base, Site 69, uh, with their hostage in tow. So... You have one live cultist. And my question would be, how do you want to handle this? You know, do you like what sort of restraints would you like? What kind of room are you doing this interrogation in? Who's doing the interrogation? How do you want to deal with it? He's I not yet awake, him. so. Uh, voice and head, uh, surely as uh, as members of the SCP Foundation, we're familiar with uh, materials that would prevent people from doing things like dimension hopping, teleporting, stuff like that. We have a cell to put them in. Anti-magic field. Uh, yes, there's a... Um, oh, I can't remember the de device off the top of my head, but yeah, it keeps um, it keeps reality bending from happening. And we've completely uh, searched them, right? And they don't have any... No, all they, or all they had on them... Rings the, or... Uh, I mean, there's some jewelry. There's some, some, um, some rings... Uh, they they look like fairly standard gold rings. Looks like a wedding ring, and then maybe a class ring of some sort. Um, one necklace, like a gold chain necklace. That's about it. Nothing else to it. Um, and then uh, a dagger, a ceremonial dagger, and then their red robe, and then the book that you took off of them, and that was it, I believe. Briefcase. And the briefcase, yes, the steel briefcase. Anything uh, anything fall out when we ask them to bend over, lift the sack, and cough, voice and head? Uh, his hernia uh, fell out a little bit, and then it uh, oh, well, backed yeah. in there. Uh, we, we shoved it back up the in there for him. In. We're not yeah. monsters. Yeah. Sure. That, that'll be useful in the interrogation. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, well, you know, we'll, we'll take away his robe, outfit him with some nice, comfy gray sweats. Okay. Sit him down on a chair, zip-tied. Obviously, okay. the nice thick zip ties. Thick yeah. zip, thick. Oh yeah, got it. The titanium zip ties. Okay, so the the room that he's in is it? Am I am, am I just sort of like what I would imagine a standard interrogation room? You know, uh, one way Ooh. mirror, a table, a chair. What I mean, oh, I don't, what are you guys thinking? What about like one uh, of those operation theaters? So that you're people way up in the watch. air. Well, so people <laughs> can watch up above. Sure, I mean, lots of people with guns. Can Guys, watch. I, you okay. called me in here. Bill, sorry, Billy Crenshaw, uh, interrogation specialist for the for the SCP Corporation. Um, if you want to watch from the theater, that's great. I do like to do my work in the same room, not between the glass. So, uh, however you can facilitate that, no problem. I will break this man. Stetson, you you want to head up in the stands and get a good look at this shit? I mean, I kind of want to. Yeah, I, I kind of want to watch. But I kind of want to also take a crack at things since I am a swing theorist uh, s specialist. Do you want well, to you you go? Uh, you want to start as like stupid crazy interrogator, and then I'll come in afterwards. I feel like you do stupid crazy better than I do. Oh, oh no! I just do stupid, empty, and cruel. You guys do your thing. Question. I'm gonna go up in the uh, in the theater with some popcorn, kick my feet up, enjoy the show. Y'all let me know if you need anything. Question. Before you begin the interrogation, because again they're not awake yet, did you want to go through the stuff that you confiscated and analyze, oh, yeah. it, or yeah, or do you yeah. want to start oh, yeah, with the yeah, yeah. interrogation Absolutely. first? We need to get as much information as possible. Okay. Before we start talking, like the the main thing about an interrogation, voice and head, mm -hmm. is knowledge, and whoever holds the more knowledge has the more power in the upper hand. So I want to, I kind of want to go through everything. Okay. To uh. Oh, I don't know. Uh, how 
how dangerous do I think opening this briefcase is going to be? Like, should I bring a D-class in here to open it? Well, uh, well, will reading the book to get information turn me into a boogum? You don't know. Yeah, I don't. Well, uh, I'm asking you, what does my brain think? I don't. You tell me what your brain thinks. Uh, Why would I tell brain, you what your brain thinks? Oh, God, my brain likes to drink boiled cheese dip. <laughs> so, like, I, I, I don't always think that great. Um, hold on. Denim yeah, cheese you two, re oh. you two researchers, you need to tell me what I need to get out of this man. So if you have the okay. most information to, to target where I'm questioning. Now, Stetson, while you were out a couple of weeks ago getting your uh, butt reduction. Yeah, the, well, they just, it was too much. My lower back started to hurt. So. Well, we noticed every time you, you'd turn around in a room, you'd knock a bottle I or a beaker off of a, of a table. It just, just got, got too expensive. much to bear. Um, got expensive. Well, Shayna executed uh, a very, very clever system that, that I think we, we should make standard that I came up with, which is that uh, we should have a D-class in the room examining, have another D-class watching through a camera, and just have that second D-class describe stuff to us. <laughs> what was the name of this procedure that you, that you made up, Stetson? The we don't want oh, to die. Oh, you're Stetson. Stetson. <laughs> Sorry, I did a, 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 a. I got a runny nose and a drippy throat, so. It's called the Hopkins maneuver. Oh, okay. Yeah, Shana, Shana named it. That's why it doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're setting up this scenario where you got your two D class. Who's playing what for D class? And who's the researcher overseeing? I'll be the researcher overseeing Stetson McCleary. Okay. Uh, who wants to be the D-class in the room, and who wants to be the D-class in the booth? Fuck you. <laughs> uh, I'll be the D-class in uh, in the in the room. Okay. Sounds great. And I'll be the D-class in no, the Stet booth. Stetson, you're you're Stetson, and right. you're observing. I can do. It. All right. Use your big you're, brain. You're going to feed instructions down to Tristan, who's going to feed them to me, and uh -huh. I'm going to go back the other way with it. This That's is how we fucking, keep everyone involved. This is, this is telephone. We're <laughs> yes. playing, te we're exactly. playing Gardic yeah. phone. Do you know how many oh, yeah. times people have died because the people in the middle said it's something different from what the top person said? Yeah. Great. It's, it's been Luckily, really Raul is still an <laughs> E-class right now, and he can't shoot anybody in the fucking head. He wasn't. They got bombs in their heads. See. Just, boom. <laughs> and Shane is on uh, medical leave. That's true. Okay. So, uh, what's the name of my D class that's in the uh, in the tank, so to speak, with him? So, is it is it just the briefcase, or is it the briefcase, the dagger, and the book all in one yes. room together? Okay. Oh boy, uh, yeah, sure. Let's, I don't think that having them together is a great idea, but I think we should do it anyway because I'm feeling lazy. Okay. <sighs> so there's a steel table, no chairs, and they are uh, just equidistantly laid out on the table in front of the D-class named uh, My name's Skeeter, just Skeeter Okay It's my last name, it's not a clarification Okay Okay. I'm a mechanic and a murderer and I'm great at both of them Okay And then who's the D-class that's watching Skeeter? Murphy Murphy Okay All right Stetson, order them around. <laughs> mm. uh, was there any like lock or key or password to this briefcase? Nope. It looks like the lock was taken off of it. All it's right, just well, it's got just the little, the little flippy flappy things. You know how briefcases have a little. Well, yeah. Let's just open up that briefcase and get a look inside. Hey, I'm Murphy. Who are you? It... Hi, hi, Murphy. I'm Skeeter. Hi, Skeeter. He says. Open the case. Oh, okay. Um, this case right here on the table. Yes. All right, I'll flip it up. Uh, I'm going to flip up them clamps there, boys, in the head, and I'm going to open it up just like this Samuel Jackson did in Pulp Fiction. You do. There's no gold light that hits you in the face. Instead, it looks like there is a foam insert that just has a cylindrical, well, half cylindrical shape that's in the... Uh, um, both the bottom and top portions of this case. There's no cylinder, though. It's empty. Oh, so it was like a sideways D, but now it's just empty. 
Yes. Uh, ain't nothing in here. Uh, it's a nice case, though. I could, I could keep this case. Scotty says it's empty. It's empty. How can? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you? Do you look all inside there? Or did he just open it and and? Hey, Skeeter. Tell tell him to go yeah, yeah. deeper. Skeeter, he says, did you, like, feel around and look around in it? Oh, I wasn't told to touch nothing. I was just told open case. <laughs> Skeeter, you got any family? I do what I told. Well, he's telling uh, you. Oh, do I have any family? No, I killed them. Oh, all right. He says, feel around the cave. Look look harder. Move stuff okay. around. Okay. I, 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 voice in the head, I'll try to pull out that foam insert, see what happens. Yeah, it, it pulls out. Uh, no big deal whatsoever, and there's a couple, looks like a dime and a, and a penny in the bottom of the case. Uh, I found a whole 11 cents in here, y'all. Uh, I'm Can I put this in my commissary? Skeeter says he found a dime and a penny. Does he have, like, any kind of tools in there? No. Um, no, like, radiation meters or... Not unless you gave it to him. No, I didn't. Well, we okay. can pass it right now. I mean, you can have somebody, you know, put it in there. You can send it through the box. Uh, Officer Murphy. Officer Murphy. Oh, I'm. I'm not an officer. Murphy. I, I'm in for killing an officer. Can he read? Yeah. Skeeter, can you read? Yeah, I can read. The fuck you mean? I mean, your name's Skeeter. I don't know. I'm a mechanic. How you think I told the difference between metric and standard? Wrench. <laughs> yes, that's right. I <laughs> use a wrench. That's very good, Murphy. Yeah, he can read. All right. Tell him to uh, kind of uh, start reading uh, that book and see what kind of information he can pull out of it. So he can keep the change? What change? I put that cents. change in my pocket, voice in the head. Okay, you do. What? I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> he found 11 cents in the briefcase. He found loose change? Loose change. Was that what the DV, the movie was inside the briefcase? Uh, I don't think we got that one generous. on the inside yet. Uh, okay. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, you know what? No. Oh. <laughs> no, he can't. Hey, Skeeter, you can't have that money. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> it looks like he's uh, keeping it anyway, Doc. Oh, well, okay, well, we'll we'll, uh, we'll get our 11 cents out of him. <laughs> <laughs> One way or another. Uh, sorry, Ske uh, Skeeter, he also said, at follow-up after you said you could read, that uh, you would got to open that book and start reading it. Out All loud. right, I, I'll out turn loud. to page one. What languages... Does Skeeter speak and read? He sp Skeeter, he speak English and Appalachian. So metric. the book metric. looks metric. The book's like looks like it's kind of leathery. Um, Skeeter, roll me an intelligence check. All right, I'm a pretty s smart fella. Mm. I'm, I made it to the third grade. Mm. I was a fifteen. You know what? You know what? That's surprisingly good for Skeeter, so I'm going to give it to you. You're going to guess that this is some sort, like the book is kind of leathery but like in a skin way, you think you think this book is made out of skin and that it's written in blood. That's what you're, that's what you're thinking. It's weird. It's Murphy. a weird book. <clears throat> yeah. I reckon this book was bound in the skin of the author's enemies and he dipped his quill in their blood. To pin right. his thoughts. Is that what it says on the first I page? I just puzzled that out with my brain. Uh, Doc, he says the book's made out of skin. Is there like a face on the front of the book? There's not the a cover? face. I'm not talking to you. Okay. I'm talking to Murph. Okay. Skeeter, what's on the front? Uh, there's not a face. It's just, it, you it's... know, it might be scrotum. <laughs> it's real soft and wrinkly. Skeeter, there is a circle painted in blood and then another smaller circle uh huh. within that ring there's a whole bunch of symbols that you don't understand but there's a lot of squiggly lines with it on the ends the innermost circle there's a bunch uh there looks to be maybe a symbol of a sun 
a whole lot of tentacles and things like that. Almost looks like a symbol for DNA. And then possibly like a, a walking cane with a couple lines through it. You're not sure. And then the very bottom of the entire circle is an eye with three spikes sticking out the bottom of the, the eye, like an eyelash or something like that. That's the only thing you see on the front of this book. Oh, boy, on, on the front cover there. There's a there's yep. this circle with all these crazy symbols. I reckon this guy was a full metal alchemist fan. Just one circle there. Uh, it's a circle and another circle, and and then I'll describe this. Sure. The, uh, symbols to him. Great. Uh, Doc, he says there's two circles and a <laughs> bunch of symbols with a Cthulhu and all that other shit. <laughs> he said before. Mm. Hey. It's... This is so frustrating. Skater. Yeah. It's just, is it, it, does he know geometry? Like, what? You know geometry? I passed a physics course. He says he's taking physics. Okay, physics. In third grade. I mean, mechanical physics. physics. Look, look. All right. He also (laughs) mentioned he likes anime. The Southern Kennesaw Institute of Technology was a fantastic trade school for our, our young coal miners. So, All right. Uh, Murphy, ask him if he can read anything inside this book. No. Skeeter, <laughs> you can read them pages. I can't read shit. You out of your mind? God damn it. What is the point? I All don't right, take, speak abyssal. T- t- Murphy, tell him to take that dagger and stab the book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Skeeter. He says, see if you can stab the book with the dagger, but I, I'll... Doc, I also... There's them holes, and he's got two pieces of change that came out of the case. You think they fit there? In the dagger? Not oh, in the book. There's two holes, two circles, and he's got two circles. Circles what are the, way what? bigger than the change. Oh, my God. Well, that I mean, literally, what the fuck <laughs> kind of D-class do we have here? I've, I've well, been D-minus. Re- these ain't, D-minus these ain't like holes. These are concentric circles, son. Well, I, I felt like I was reading a lot of crime novels, and I thought I might have had it. Idea. Well, look, all right, Michael Crichton, calm the fuck down. And now do my your name's job. Murphy. You tell oh. Doctor Stetson I'm more of a blunt instrument man, but I'll give I'll give a shiv a shot. Uh, I'll that grab book. that dagger. I'll stab it right in the middle of the circle. All right, you pretend s- like it's coming at you in the shower. Roll me a strength check. Hmm. It stole your biscuit off your plate. Peter's more of a more of a dexterous boy. Yeah. Well, well this is more about penetration. Seventeen. How about that? All right. Uh, you stab into this book, and you get about halfway through it, you would guess. Um, no blood runs out of the book or anything like that. It doesn't it doesn't react. doesn't do anything. Oh, you stabbed the shit out of it. Uh, the knife, though, has a nice feel to it. It's, it's like oh. a rich mahogany. The blade itself looks like it's been polished. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice blade. Murph, this Curved. thing is right well balanced. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he stabbed the book. Nothing happened. He likes the knife a lot. I can keep the knife. I'll give you the change back. It's actually... <laughs> oh, I can't hear him. He says he'll trade you the change for the knife. Uh, the knife is 15 cents. Um, Skeeter, sorry. It's only 15 cents for the knife, and you got 11. God damn inflation. Fucking Joe Biden. I swear to God. He, bl- he blames the president for the inflation. That's fair. Fair, fair. No, that D-class that died. Oh, that's right. <laughs> no, he didn't die. That was a different. Heaven. That was a different universe. I heard about it. Uh, voice <laughs> Scott, and head, I'm gonna... Scott talks a lot when he's drunk. Mm. Boys and head, I'm going to go down to where uh, Skeeter is. Okay. I, and I, I'm going to stay here then. Yeah, no, you can go back to your cage, pudding. <laughs> prison pudding. Depends yeah, on the meat pit. <laughs> I was going to say, according to who you ask, they live in a meat pit. <laughs> it's shaped like a big old Weber grill. Yeah. <laughs> According to them. Uh, right. Not a barracks. Put a meat I'm, I'm going to take that. Uh, I'm going to take that dagger away from the D class. Good idea. Oh, oh, hell. You ain't no fun. I'm going to send the uh, D class back to meet Sylvania. Okay. You're good. You can keep that 11 cents. All right. I reckon and, I will. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip through this book as he's taken away. What languages do you speak and read? Um, I don't 
don't have any of that written down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a voice in head. Uh, uh, surely uh, Stetson would call his friend Scott, who, uh, funny enough, speaks Aramaic. Oh, okay. You would Seriously. think I would do that. Um, I wrote that shit down. Okay. I'm just going to go. Uh, I'm going to try to read it. All right. Um, <laughs> high you low. Me, uh, oh, you were going to do high low? I was going to say, like, quadrant. What, like, I mean, I'll give you a four. quadrant. I mean, you guys get that more right than you do the fucking high lows. I haven't done one of these yet. So. It's true. Quadrant. Uh, third. It was a one. Yeah. All right. I think that's the first one gotten wrong on this show. So, well, so I'm, no, I'm you don't. You don't recognize this <laughs> language as one that you know how to read. I don't even know English that well, to be honest. It's with fair. You. I'm more of a hands-on kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Braille. Well, let me. Let me let me call the foot freak. Okay. And get and get old Footsy McGee down here. All right. Since I know uh, he knows like weird foot stuff, foot things, and also weird languages to pick up foreign women, so that he can like take he, foot inference. And he learned Aramaic oh, to to pick up chicks. Yeah. <laughs> Stetson. Stetson. Um. Uh, uh, I don't know how many times I have to tell you this. I learned Aramaic because it's what Jesus spoke, and back then they all wore open-toed shoes. Uh huh. Right. Okay. So that it. you could cuck our sure. savior? Well, I don't know. I don't get the point. I don't know. Look, I, I don't have time to explain the entire field of paranormal podiatry to you. Let me see if I can read this book for you. He's really into the foot washing ritual mm -hmm. that you have to do with the, the whole church thing. With the little Easter. fishes. With the and guess. the kisses. Fishes? Uh, well, the kisses come from the little fishes. I have oh, fish gotten kisses. kisses on my feet from three different popes. Okay. I get the kisses because it's such a fishes. Love fish Pope kisses. kisses. <laughs> fish kisses. All fish right. Fish kisses. <laughs> So you open the book and you look through it, and obviously this is a religious text of some sort, um, and just flipping through it, it seems like there are two very distinct sections, one much older than the other one is in terms of the writing style, the language used, um, but essentially the, the book refers to uh, the worship of a god, uh, Yaldabaoth, um, which is a you god of, of flesh, and they refer to themselves as the Nal... And I'm going to apologize to any SCP aficionados because I'm probably going to mispronounce this. Fuck but them. They don't even know how to pronounce Ketter. <laughs> that's, that's fair. That is a fair <laughs> point. Uh, Nalka. <laughs> so they refer to themselves as the Nalka. Um, and so you're reading through the book, and especially in the, the old version of it, they talk about... Uh, there's, you know, lots of different little parables and stories and things like that. There's especially a lot of stories about the person who apparently founded this religion named Grand Carcist Ion. And his stories are all about like going through a series of tests to better his body in order to transcend to the level of uh, Yaldabaoth until they, you know, until he overtakes them and becomes God himself. Though that part of the book is where that ends and the newish part starts. Basically, the newish part says, fuck all that. That's all wrong. Um, and it talks about trying to perfect humanity to bring them to the level of godhood. And they talk a lot about perfecting the flesh um, and worshiping of diseases and pathogens and things like that, um, transcending, transcending the limitations of human flesh, um, real big emphasis on no afterlife. So this is this is everything. Um, so based on how this book is written, you're going to guess that there appears to be multiple sects within this religion, um, though there is also an. Um, mythological origin story of sorts for Yaldabaoth. So the way that it tells it is that all people, all well, all people, but also all living beings were created by Yaldabaoth um, and given instinct and flesh and all that. And then 
humanity embraced machinery too much, which is the creation of the god Mechane. And this caused uh, Yaldabaoth to um, basically get really pissed off and want to wipe the slate clean and send everybody back to the Stone Mechane? Age. Mechane, that's right. What about McCable? Mechane Fetamine. Yes. Mechanate. Mechane, yep. 2024. Um, <laughs> <laughs> McCain Palin. Um, so, according to the myth, uh, Mechane constructed a cage around Yalda, Yaldabaoth uh, with his own body. And so the the cult, the, the Nalka, seemed to be really interested in not only transcending their own flesh, but also freeing Yaldabaoth from her uh, metallic prison through some means or another. And again, there's lots of flowery language in here. Um, the first part of the book is really anti um, any type of machinery or technology of any type. The second half, the one that seems like it's much newer, uh, like a New Testament, um, that one seems like it's pretty okay with technology and machinery as long as it, you know, helps them meet their own ends, you know. Um, so Classic yeah. Amish Mennonite tale. So, yeah, so essentially what you're getting out of this is that, uh, you know, they're looking for an ascension of all humanity and life on the earth to a form more fitting of the flesh God's vision. That's what you get out of this book. And it takes you quite a while to read all this because it's a thick, thick book. But, yeah, so that seems to be uh, to be it. Stetson, let me give you the short version. It looks like a bunch of different religious weirdos took turns checking an incomplete Cronenberg script out of the library and writing their own fan fiction in here. Okay. okay. But um, apparently these weird motherfuckers, carcism, carcis, carcinogens, carcinogens, yeah. They worship uh, that flesh stuff we found in Russia, or maybe not. I don't know. They like it. I tell you what, they're gonna. They like that shit. All right, and uh, they want to wipe the slate clean like Ted Kaczynski and turn us all to Cronenbergs. Okay, I know some words you said there. Yeah. Roll intelligence. I'm smart. Checks. Boom. All of you. All your research. Fifteen for Scott. Okay, 15 is pretty good. 17. Well, Billy is in the room taking information. And okay. He got a, writing down. He got a 17. Well. Billy, you weren't present for the thing that so you wouldn't know, I guess. Um, well, I need to know everything. Your wig lady would would know, but you, you wouldn't. Cause she's you on medical leave. Yeah, she's on medical leave, so she would yeah. know if she were here, but she's not here. Um, <clears throat> both of the other two, though, you recall your, your time over in the alternate dimension and dealing with those fleshy uh, masses. And that sounds kind of similar to what they're talking about in this book in terms of, you know, making people ascend to a more natural form that would be uh, more uh, more in line with Yaldabaoth's vision of, like, a perfect fleshy being, so... That seems pretty I similar. I am glooping, you are glooping, we are glooping, we all gloop together. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, Stetson, I am the gloop and the gloop is with me. You remember when we were doing that VR thing and the, the mangy mutt and the chihuahua and the beagle all reenacted that scene from the thing? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that's what we're dealing with here. Okay. Well, <sighs> why don't we, uh, let's wake him up. Let's talk to him. Okay, so as you prepare... No, so Scott, what do you think? Oh. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, Billy is itching to get into that butthole. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I mean, let's uh, let's wax up his fingers and let him slide on in. Why don't you all call Shayna, too, maybe? Maybe she'll answer her phone if you really need to know. She was getting her bunions removed? What was she on medical leave for? Uh, I thought it was because she... <laughs> no, I'm not going to nope. make that joke. <laughs> I'm not going to make that joke. <clears throat> Why was she on medical leave? Again? I think she was just getting her hair dyed, Stetson. <laughs> Honestly. Oh. She it's not purple naturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Okay. 
Her roots were showing a little too much. She had an appointment. You know, it takes all day for those women to do their hair. Uh, I guess so. Now, uh, yeah, let's let's give her a call. Maybe she'll answer. Bring, bring. All right, I'll bring, call her. Bring, bring. I'll bring, put her on bring. speaker. Yeah, I don't have her bring, number. She bring. won't give it to me. Yeah, I don't blame bring, her. Bring, bring, bring. What do you want? Uh. This this is Stetson McCleary. We work together. At I, yeah, the SCP I saw it Foundation. on the caller ID. Site sixty nine. Is this? Yeah. Is this Jane? Is this Jane? We we work Jana? together every week. Hi, Shayna. 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 You're both here. I'm not oh, on speaker, you're, but I know you're, on, you're there. I just you're say hello. Phone. It's Scott Hopkins. Ugh. We Scott. found a book. We we read this book about uh, getting gloopy <laughs> with God. Uh-huh. Uh huh. With the cult, the cult, the cult guy. Yeah. Um. Gloopy the cult god. Yeah, he wants to make everyone Cronenbergers, and have like a cookout, and like an ascension. I is that like a potluck? I. And what do you want from me? Statue, did she mention the ascension? She said something about ascent, uh, the ascensions. The census. Holy shit, that bitch is smart as hell. Extensions. Extensions. She's getting oh, extensions. Oh, she's getting extensions. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> so why, why don't you guys just tell me what, what it is you want me to tell you about? In, in kind of a montage scene, then we'll roll for it. There's going to be a montage. Why did, montage. Why did you I call her? I mansplain <laughs> as hard as I ever have, boys and head. Okay. As hard as I ever have. Okay. With a, with a 14. Lectures. You do. You and tell I, her everything. I, I spice it up with with whatever Stetson McCleary can do. Charisma. No. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. You, may, you, in, you don't enhance anything. No. You distract from the story. Why is he just breathing heavily into the phone? Yeah. Well, because uh, it's I got pollen in my office. Okay. Uh, I do it. You want like a history or intelligence or? I don't. I don't know what you guys are doing. You said she, Shani would know if she were here. Well, yeah, but like we they already know because they already they rolled high enough. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they just like, inform you on, everything. Click. She's on PTO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we, yeah. We we wanted to see if her women's intuition would lead us to the additional knowledge. No. No. Okay. Bye, Shayna. <laughs> I press she, hang up on. She on already Stetson's hung up phone. on me. <laughs> She's gone. Yeah. She's gone. She's been gone for a while now. <laughs> I hope she gets good extensions. Shayna goes back to her uh, scheduled downtime of self care. <laughs> it's just a spa day. <laughs> it's a spa day. <laughs> and we're yeah, ruining great. it. Yeah. Well, Billy, I think it's time to clear the mechanism. I'm gonna get up in those box seats and chow down on some Orville Red Markers. Okay. So as Billy prepares to start the interrogation, that's where we're gonna take a break. And we're back. <clears throat> All right. Billy, the floor is yours. The other two researchers, Stetson and um oh, I want Stetson. To be down here for it. <clears throat> oh, Stetson wants to be in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to be in the room where it happens. Okay, I'm up in the peanut gallery, voice and head. Yeah, I can't remember your name, Scott. 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 Scott, Scott, Scott there Paranormal we go. Paranormal podiatrist. Yep, Scott's up in the rafters uh, with some snacks of some sort. I've uh, got popcorn. I've got a big old bowl of it. Okay. Ooh, that sounds good. Cracker Jacks, possibly. No. Um, corn dogs. Disgusting. Nutritional Snow nuts. yeast. Snow nuts. That's what they're called, right? What, are, what are snow nuts? You buy them at the theater. They, they're shaped like little testicles. And they got little white sprinkles on them. <laughs> snow nuts. caps. Snow caps. They're caps. They're not testicles. <laughs> what are your testicles shaped like? Yeah. Oh, I'm pretty sure mine are snow nuts. They're ribbed, they're just like my nuts. I don't know what y'all, what theaters y'all are going to, but I got snow nuts at mine. <laughs> <laughs> You're eating melted snow caps. <laughs> just like he has that uh, that cookie shop in his malls down there, right? <laughs> Likely story. <laughs> All right, so um, Hooky Topi is real, Dennis. <laughs> sure, you two go into the interrogation room. Uh, the individual, since it took so long to read the book, is awake and is pretty relaxed. Um, not really doing, not like frantically moving around or anything, but uh, just 
sort of sitting in the chair. Uh, you notice that he has uh, dark black hair, though it is uh, pretty short, I would say. Not like a buzz cut or anything like that, but more like kind of like my hair, you know, short-ish. Oh, great. I'm going to walk again. <clears throat> and uh, two colored eyes. He has a brown eye and a blue eye. Oh, Bowie. <clears throat> yes. Um, and he's just sitting there. Is there a table or just a chair in this room, by the way? He's there's tied to a, a chair. Table. Like, he's in tied to a chair. A table. In yeah, front of a, a table. table. Okay. Yeah. Are there other chairs for you two or no? Oh, no. I'm going to be standing the whole time. Okay. I just I didn't got, know if I there was a chair. Okay. I just didn't know if there was anything else in the room with you guys. Wait. So, it's. So we're not doing a, a, an operating theater it's an thing. Operating it's a regular theater. interrogation room. It's an operating theater, but instead it's of an a operating theater. table. Okay. It's, it's got an interrogation room set got up. Like a, okay, so like I, a little I set. do have a seat up there. I'm not just yes. watching from, from the fucking ventilation <laughs> yeah. system like a psycho. <laughs> yes. Well, right. you're still a psycho, but yes. <laughs> well, I am watching like a psycho, but I don't look like one. Okay. We put together this set so that I felt more at home in my sure. natural environment. So you come in. He doesn't uh, seem to react. Uh, his eyes glance over and look at you to follow you as you guys enter into the room, but he doesn't say anything. He's got a pretty even keeled demeanor about him. I'm going to hey. walk over to him. Okay. He's looking and at just you. Whisper in his ear. Shh. <laughs> He's, gonna, he makes a face like. Mm, mm. And I'm going to brush his hair. Now you're just being weird. Kiss him! <laughs> Kiss him. Slowly brush his hair. So with a, uh, with a comb or a brush? Yeah, with a with a brush. Okay. He uh <laughs> he he makes a face for a second and then evens back out, thinking that this is obviously some sort of in intimidation tactic to break him. And he's not going to break. So that's, that's fine. I'm still going to brush his hair. It's fine. Like a My Little Pony doll. I got it. <clears throat> so tell me about this uh, Yaldabaoth guy. What's there to tell? It's the one true I God. Know. You a uh, new or Old Testament kind of fella? Uh, I would say that I'm a new Testament kind of fella. All right. I'm not going to be able to scare him with uh, electronic devices. <laughs> no. Off the table. I mean, of the uh, like the, the stuff that you took from him, like he had a watch, a phone, stuff like that. Okay. Something okay. Like, okay. He had technology on him. They were just standard devices, nothing special about them. Aside right, from them so, being kind of expensive. Uh, and I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Mikhail. Uh, Mikhail. I was uh, going to do Stefan, but I was like, nah. <laughs> we'll go Mikhail. Mikhail, uh, tell me about this uh, perfection of humanity leading to ascension. <clears throat> I, I usually turn uh, people away at the door who are trying to sell me their religion, but give me your pitch. Well, I mean, look at your body. I mean, you get, you get. Do you get sick ever? Constantly. Yeah. Exactly. So you're you're flawed. Uh, sickness. You know, if your if your body is uh, strong enough, you just adapt to it, and you don't even feel it. It just it enhances you. So your bodies are weak. Hmm. Is this motherfucker just a Christian scientist? <laughs> is it? Are you are you part of those people that? That just drink piss on Yik Yak or what? Drink piss? No, I don't. I eat raw yak chicken piss. out of a jar. On Yik Yak. What? No, I don't I'm, eat I'm raw chicken out of a jar either. Do you do you maybe like tie <clears throat> potatoes to your feet to leach toxins what? out through your socks? No, none of that, these that's things. That's not part of that. All no. Right. I've just seen some stuff on. I'm the, pretty on sure the you guys are just making up things. So how? So like your body is real strong. Yeah. You overcome sickness. Yeah. What about uh, other physical stimuli? Are you like the best arm wrestler or what? Sure. Untie me. Let's arm wrestle. No. I'm going to take out a small uh, jar <laughs> of chicken. <laughs> chicken and piss <laughs> and potatoes. Of, piss um, chicken. <clears throat> maple syrup. Okay. And I'm going to drizzle it on his fingers. He's looking at you and he's just like, what? Okay, you drizzle maple syrup on his fingers. Yeah, just slowly. Okay. Yeah. Wait, wait like, are the maple leaves going to the World Series? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Put it on his toes! Like, he's looking at you <laughs> again, <laughs> again, like, slightly confused for a second, but he thinks, like, this is just some sort of weird intimidation tactic, because he's, 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 not, he's not having it. He's not coming off as being intimidated. He just oh, goes fine. right back to focusing on the person that matters, <laughs> which is Billy, yeah. and not the crazy person... 
I'm not who's, a crazy person. You're combing his hair and putting maple syrup on him. You're crazy. I'm not a crazy person. I, I uh, radio into Stetson because I see that his, or sorry, into Scott because I see that his line is blinking in my earpiece. Hey, ask him, uh, ask him how strong you need to be to overcome the thickness. The thickness. Yeah, I mean, he can hear you. What do you think about that? You're right up there. Yeah, but I was simulating being in his radio because <laughs> oh, he wanted okay. to do the radio for some I, reason. I, okay. I just throw, I just crushed the radio on, on the ground. Okay. <laughs> God damn. I, uh, I hate technology too. This guy uh, can do I, anything. I, I better tell you. Better tell him what he wants to know. I don't mind technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Well, let's tr let's try with a little. Uh, what do you got? You guys want to go like psychological, physical, or medieval, or Stetson? Uh, I um, do. You, do you want to love him? <laughs> I take out of my um my coat, like the inner pocket. I got like this Sausages. little little box. It's about like um one inch by two inch. Uh huh. And um, he's on a chair, right? Yes, mm -hmm. he's got his arms strapped to the the arms of this metal chair. And how much like room is there uh, on like the armrests of the chair? Is there any room or you, anything like that? What do you mean, like a separation like, so between I, his arm? I, or? Yeah, well, not not separation, but like towards the end of the. Oh, the I was armrest. the way I imagine it. He has his elbows all the way back to the to the back of the chair. Exactly. Right? So, is there yeah. like a little bit of room where his fingers would be? Um, his hands are sticking out over the ends of the chair. Okay, so I'm just gonna rest this little box. On like maybe the top of his hand. Okay, you could do it and right just, in. F if you go too far in front of where the um, well, he the can't straps his, are. He can't move his hands. He right? can. He can flippy flappy his hands around oh. a little bit. He's just well, he's just... zip tied around the wrist to the chair, and then his hands are sitting off over the edge of the chair. So he doesn't have a very wide range of movement though, so he can't really. I'm just gonna go um, turn my back to him so he can't see what I'm doing. <clears throat> okay. And just. Open up this little box real quick. And okay. Tap out um, the ants that are inside ants. that box. <laughs> you have ants? <laughs> okay. Onto the maple They're biting syrup ants. Fingers. Yeah. Okay. What kind of ants? They're just like fire sugar ants. They're fire. What? Well, there's a Fireball great. Ants. There is a big, big difference between fire ants and sugar ants. Do you ever see like. Do you ever see like. Uh, Indiana Crystal Jones? Skull? Crystal Skull. What kind of ants are those? <laughs> Those are fire Neither. sugar ants. <laughs> Those are not fire sugar ants. They're like, just piranha ants. They're like Amazon ants. <laughs> they fit in like a little box and I just... There was no big box. They, they were in a fucking giant mound in that movie. Well, I know, but I caught them <clears throat> in a little box. What is a mound but a box of earth? So you caught like four and put them in the box? That's all I Getting need. bitey. Okay. So you put four ants on them. So they can eat the, the sugar fingers. So they're eating his hands. Yeah. Okay. That'll take um, a while. So you put them on 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 his sugar hand. Sugar hands. And um, they start to to eat at the maple syrup, and they also chomp a little bit at the hands. And he just stares at you with no affect, and like doesn't seem to to notice any I'm of the pain. I'm gonna put my finger up to his lips. He just he's just eye contact with you, no sound whatsoever. All right, I mean, they, like these tilting guys his head slightly in like a, oh, well, that's cute. These guys have obviously put you themselves ate. through their ringer physically. You wait. Uh, let's let's do a little. Uh, let's give him some time in the hole, with a hood on. Should we put like a CD on? Oh, at random intervals, at random volumes. Good. When you hey, say fellas. in the hole. Are you putting him in like a, a cell or solitary? Okay. But also sensory deprivation with a with a hood on so he can't see. So okay. He's in darkness. Okay. And then blaring music so he can't sleep. Okay. And we'll just we'll just do that for a while. Is it in complete darkness as well or? Uh, well, no, he's just got a hood on. So he okay, he just has a hood on. Okay. Okay. You put him in the cell. Uh, are there any cameras in the cell? Mm hmm Okay. So you can see. All right. So this is this is gonna work, Billy? I mean, the mind can only take so much. Okay. Human you, beings are social creatures. You yeah, but I, no one's immune to solitary. There's cameras on him too, so we can watch. Yeah. So he's just sitting 
in the middle of the, did you get your ants back or no nah, they're they're burrowing into his fingernails at this point i mean like, well so like how is it, what are his wrists attached to now cuz he was zip tied to a chair so i assume yeah, you're taking no, him off the chair we picked up the oh, whole chair oh you picked chair. the whole chair up okay yeah. <laughs> yeah great okay so it's just okay it's a it's pretty, on wheels it's an it's, office chair yeah <laughs> yeah he's uh seems to be totally fine Though you notice that the ants, after a while, after they've like really dug in there to his hands, they just kind of stop moving after a while. They just they're mo- they're just standing perfectly still. Like What's up, mid, Scott? Mid bite. Hey, fellas. Mm-hmm. Shana and I uh, we studied a really interesting anomaly a couple weeks ago. This guy thinks he's so fucking strong. Why don't we give him a sip of uh, SCP-420? <laughs> Is that like a drink? Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's called aggressive skin condition, Stetson. It's going to give him super cancer. <laughs> Drugs and only my... we have the cure. <laughs> it takes quite a while. <laughs> yeah, that's that's perfect. It takes it's... a while, but we can get that information. The drugs were my next step, so I, yeah. I, I think we can advance right on to that because I was going to go with... Uh, why, all kinds of drug withdrawal. Well, what do you Next. think? Why do you think my ants stopped eating? Out of sugar. Uh, maybe they got full stats, and I'll fucking know they're ants. <laughs> maybe he killed the ants because they're just ants, and his hands are. I'm free. not a goddamn ant whipsurer over here. That's you're, you're they're your ants. <laughs> Can I do a nature check? Sure. You're their queen now. Seventeen. Uh, they shouldn't be just sitting there totally still, like no movement whatsoever. They're just like frozen in place. The answer is now, Stetson. Build my soda. Mm, vodka. <laughs> they recognize a new queen. Something seems off. Uh, roll me perception checks. It's a critical 20. You think he's on a loop on that camera and he's gone? I rolled a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Billy got an 18. Uh, Scott doesn't see shit. Uh, Billy and especially Stetson, you notice that like there's movement within the bag itself, like a little bit of movement around here, even though like his body's not moving. There's a little bit of movement going on. Uh, and then it's sort of like it's only for a few seconds and then it settles down. And then it right, well, just goes back to sitting still. Take send, out. send the incendiary uh, alarm to burn the hood off in a flash with phosphorus. I don't think. It, it's got a little thing in it. It just. It wouldn't just off. burn the sack. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not how phosphorus works. It's magic <laughs> super technology. <laughs> we have no, it. no. The it's fire oh, no, Fine. no. Send a D class in there to take the hood off. <clears throat> okay. Send a D class in there with a lighter. You got to uh, <laughs> slowly go around. <laughs> you guys got that Skeeter guy still? Ugh. Yeah, but let's charge him to go in there. 11 cents. <laughs> well, you want me to do him. what for how much? Take the man's hood off and I'll solitary. I'll stay in sale. Uh, no, you won't. And we grab him out. And we God throw him in damn there. it. <laughs> That's my dime. I earned it. Take, take his hood off. Take the you, man's hood off. Take All right, I'll off. take his goddamn hood. Just get off of me. I'll walk in there and I'll take his fucking hood off. And ask him about the ants. Uh, hey, what? You kill them ants? There's no response. I take his hood off. Uh, roll me a deck save with disadvantage. Sure. Well, that's a that's a twenty. Not natural. All right. That's a nine. So I got a nine. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you take the hood off, and uh, whatever this guy was, his head right down the middle has split in half, and his two separate mouths that leap out, and each one <laughs> fucking bites you in the fucking neck. Uh, and, like, the head itself sort of, like, wriggles free from the rest of the body, and the body seems to breach. start to, like, fall apart into different pieces, each piece with mouths and uh, like different little limbs, almost like a, like a centipede, and they just rip apart Skeeter, like just fucking rip him apart. And then, uh, yeah, that sucks. What are you guys doing? That was so lovable. 
Uh, well, the security <laughs> door is still closed. It uh, is. Stetson, Scott, do you want to burn that sucker or what? Uh, how, how likely do we think it's gonna? It is that it's gonna break out of there. I don't know. We could try to observe it. Take some readings. Intelligence check. I rolled another fuck. <laughs> You're sixteen. <laughs> 14. Uh, you For those two. at home that don't know, I have a, a set of custom dice that the one says fuck. <laughs> so you botched. I um, botched. Those are new dice? Yeah, it's, those are the new dice. He's already double botched with that. All yeah, right. yeah, yeah. From yeah, your friends, right? Thanks, right guys. Away. haven't rolled a single 20, but two botches in a row. Definitely Appreciate didn't, it. didn't make that joke about waiting hey, that die. They certainly weren't loaded. <laughs> hey, look at the air bubbles in this fucker. <laughs> those aren't air bubbles. That's lead. Um <laughs> The Liquid two of you that lead. are not uh, into foot it's fetishes, <laughs> yeah. uh, you realize that, you know, you just put them in solitary confinement. It's not really, um, it's like a tall-ish room, uh, but it still has a ventilation duct in it because it's not like a containment unit. Um, so it could definitely get out of the vent that's in that room. Is there like a microphone in there or like a... Yeah, there's a speaker in there and a camera. Flame flower. I'm just no, gonna not a flamethrower. I'm going to just hit the button. Beep boop. S stop. <laughs> Does it make noise? Does it, it scream with its mouth? What's uh, your persuasion check? <laughs> yeah, real persuasion. Uh, I feel like I should get on the radio and uh, call in for a fire team. And like it's a literal a critical fire team. 20. Wow. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so part of the, let's, you know what? Um, we're going to do... Roll me a D6. Okay. Wait, hold on. One, two, three, four. Yeah, D6. It's a three. Okay. Uh, his right leg. His right arm. And one of the two heads, the brown-eyed one. Stop. That a girl. The other three or four por yeah, three or four portions of them skitter scatter up towards the vent. Uh, what are, what are Where you are we at with that fire team? Well, I mean, they weren't I mean, we standing gotta, like, outside the door. I know, but there's got to be some sort of like lockdown uh, procedures for the ventilation system. Oh yeah, Especially we we definitely like, have, have yeah. vent things like an alien that are sh shut. Sure. So we. we we do that. We do that. Okay. Um, so he gets up into the vents, and then you know you shut it down. So it, it seems like uh, it's it's contained. stuck in there. It's contained. It's obviously contained in the vent. It's obviously not going anywhere. Obviously. Uh, Bill, you got, you got those that fire team here yet with their fucking incendiary grenades or what? So imagine you I have your them. vent in sections. It's stuck in a specific section of the vent. <clears throat> I called the fire team. Okay, fire. I mean, where's the fire team going? They going in? It's gonna gonna go open the front door to the solitary and burn. Yeah, because they're not the, moving. The oh, the pieces that, that are just sitting in there. Got it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so you open the door. They and freak out a little bit. Yeah. They light the flamethrower. Boom! That stuff's burnt to a crisp. Dead. Nice. Um, so yeah, so that all that remains is what's in the vent. So then, can we turn on the vent to pressurize? Um, that section and then open up the vent door back into the solitary confinement like to pushing shoot it? everything pushing everything back <coughs> down into the room yeah because it so, made a vacuum because it sucked up all the oxygen uh you could uh, you and could, then they can shoot it with the uh the, uh, the flamethrowers you could you could try that i'm gonna try that okay um so you pressurize that section of the vent uh and then you open the Steady. doors Steady. And the flamethrowers are there waiting. Nothing comes out. Nothing comes out. Right. Other than some pieces of metal. Shit. If it shoot, it shoot its way through. Okay. Uh, shoot its way through fellas, what? we got a goddamn containment <laughs> breach. <laughs> we, we need to retreat to the next level, shut everything down, <laughs> and burn everything in this fucking section. All of a sudden, I don't care who it is or if it has a new puppy or daughter. It's dead now. <laughs> you hear a lot of in the walls like all around you but also like giggling and snickering 
It's probably the ants. Uh, uh, a little bigger than ants, you would guess. So TTs? Billy's sticking with the fire squad. Titties? TTs. I don't know what TTs are. But Billy right. draws his his pistol. That's all he has. Okay. And um, the the briefcase full of drugs that he was gonna uh, inject that guy with to try to make them go through withdrawal symptoms. And okay. All I have is a Louisville Slugger. <laughs> a Louisville Slugger. I can't believe I'm gonna die with this nerd. Okay. All I got is this big ass dick. Are you are you like <laughs> sounding the alarm? Are you putting yes. the building on lockdown? He said, "Put it in lockdown." Okay. And then you're on a container, gotcha. container breach. Right. The we'll first thing he said. Container breach. So yeah. So the the lights change. It's no longer the bright white lights, but it's the red flashing lights, and it has a very, very uh, nefarious sort of tone to it now. Uh, but yeah. Beep, 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 now, voice and head. Surely, side sixty nine is structured in a standard uh, SCP fashion, where each level of the facility has a single access point to get to the next level. You yes. shut that access level off. Yeah. All right. It's also so, more below ground than above ground. Right. Yeah. We're 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 and we're all the way down. I mean you're not so, all the way down. We're all down. the way down. All the way down would be where the nuclear uh the nuclear uh on site bomb is. So So I've called containment breach. We're shut off now. Sure. You are and you are in here alone with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Guys it's time to do some big dick shit. <laughs> I mean, it's time for you to do some big dick shit. I will be here for moral support. Okay. And you hear every so often just the echoing of little skittering noises. Uh, so we, we had, what, two or three <clears throat> flamethrower guys? Yes. And you know there's four pieces three, of this heard. thing left. All right. Yeah. Uh, so we, we form a, a tight triangle. And you three ding-dongs. With a... Uh, a point, a rear, and then uh, a side guard. Okay. Is, everyone's glancing around. We should we should uh, move towards the access point with all post available haste to get these important researchers back to the safety of the upper levels. Okay. And, and voice in the head on the way. <coughs> can I just do a quick detour into Shayna's quarters so I can grab some hairspray and a lighter? Uh, sure. Uh, cool. She's not gonna like it. She's not She'll gonna like be it. fine. You know how much hairspray costs? You did a quick detour by yourself. Uh, well, I'll, I'll no, ask the guys if they come I, I with me. I went with them. I went with them. You went with them. I okay. think the flamethrowers will be fine, Doc. I, I think we should all stick together to make sure that we're not yeah. infected with fucking weird ass flesh virus. <laughs> so we're gonna have to go. <clears throat> well, why would we detour instead of going straight to the access point? Okay, fine. You know what? Get, you're right. Get me to the elevator. That's what we're doing. Okay. Thank you. Okay, good. But All right. nobody can leave. And you, Stetson. You two are the most important researchers here. Why, well, I know, but what if we're infected? You're I not, would like I to do an insight check on Billy Hell. Crenshaw, please. Sure. So you can really also roll intelligence. That's a 22. Okay. I mean, Billy seems, I mean, aside from just being a, a, a nut job who's gung-ho... Um, you don't think he's infected, but also uh, you seem to recall if it were the flesh that hates, um, there would be like a redness to the flesh, whereas this guy had no such redness. It just seemed like his body split apart. Oh, that's a huge fucking relief. Deformed. It's just a fucking the thing. It's not a yeah, goddamn. It's just a, uh, it's just a monstrous hates. creature, not the flesh that hates. It's not an infection because uh, you'd all be fucked at this point already. Mm -hmm. Um so nobody trusts anyone now. You're all <laughs> no, moving that's why fucks we've, anybody. We've anymore. been together the entire time and we all see each other. Let's keep going. So you're all moving right. towards the elevator? Uh, okay, Billy. Access knowing, point knowing elevator. What I've realized now that I've calmed down a little bit. Okay. Um I think instead of immediately opening this containment breach and allowing it to spread throughout the facility. We should instead focus our efforts on finding all those little flesh critters and killing them to death. Yeah, and that's the whole point. Yeah, exactly. You get real squirrely when shit hits the fan. Look, I, I lost my shit temporarily. I'm fine now. Oh. 
I'm just okay. gonna take a little nap. What was that noise that you made? Oh. <laughs> was he calling the creatures? That came from the other hole. Don't noise. worry about it. Roll perception. Billy's high with wow. a twenty-two. Fucking eight. Okay. Perception is uh, eighteen. Okay. Billy. Billy's hot with a twenty-two. Okay. Uh, yes. The, Scott kind of sort of hears it, not as well as the other two. Um, you can hear this echoing voice sort of bouncing around in the walls, talking about how Yaldabaoth will set you free, and that uh, he only wants to make you perfect. Um, your flesh is weak, and he will make it str- or He, as in, like, him personally, will make it strong for, for Yaldabaoth. Uh, Fucking kidding me. And then you notice that a vent flap door drops at the opposite end of the hallway and one of the little leggy centipede things uh, starts moving like in all directions around the wall like sort of like a like a sonic game how you can run up walls and things like that as if it's nothing Uh, but the leg itself has opened up into like a maw of teeth uh, as there's like a hundred legs and it's just skittering towards your group Throw me one of those incendiary fuck grenades. This, <clears throat> fuck this proselytizing legapede. Proselytizing legapede. We okay. did it. Uh, why, I'm not giving you a fucking grenade. We're standing next to you, and it's right there. I start shooting the thing. Okay. We need to set it on fire. Statsons, let the professionals do their job. I mean, we're not getting out of here alive. Neither is that thing. So, like... Throw fire at it. The That's fire it. team has the flamethrowers. The fire. Go, fire. Yeah, yeah go, we fire, all, go. We shoot at it. And with our flamethrowers and I Security shoot Security, Mon, use firebolt. Okay. So We're everyone's doing that. All right, so <laughs> everybody's <laughs> focus firing on the leg monster down the hallway. And they're, they're shooting flamethrowers and they're shooting guns. And this thing is, like, doing a pretty good job of trying to dodge and move around. But roll me attacks for your three... Security personnel. I got one. Uh, 19. Uh, I assume uh, they're proficient. 19. Some sort of dexterity score? Yeah, they're proficient. Oh, <laughs> I gotta get my security guy out. Hey, that's just a 20. Natural. 20 non-natural. <laughs> security guard slash deli owner. Oh, that's a 20. Sorry, that's not what the accent you used. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. Uh, So, yeah. So, you guys, this thing is very squirrely. It's moving around. It's getting, you know, it's dodging a lot, but you eventually hit it and it starts to squeal and writhe around. uh, And you guys feel a sense of relief. Uh, Stetson, you hear a whisper in your ear. I feel a sigh of relief because I just shit my pants. Thanks for the maple syrup. I I didn't give anybody maple syrup. And you feel all of a sudden, because you were a little distracted with the thing that was coming down the hallway, that the half head is sitting on your shoulder. And then all of a sudden you feel like a wet willy, but like a spiked tongue just shoot into your ear canal. And you feel it just riddle rattle around on the inside of your brain. Uh, can I use the Louisville Ugh. slugger to start hitting to knock it, it out? <laughs> Uh, so roll to attack. Uh, you know what? Actually, roll me a sanity check. I forgot save? that was a thing. A save or a check? But, uh, you know what? Save. Good, because I'm proficient in sanity saves. Son of a bitch. I hate, love to hate Stetson. Uh, 20. <laughs> or, Scott, I called him the wrong. You're managing to keep a calm, cool head about being tongued in the <laughs> ear by a demon. <laughs> roll attack. And a perception check. What do you want first? Uh, let's go with perception and then attack. Uh, perce- perception was a nine. Okay. You don't notice anything. And my attack was worse. Uh, <laughs> it's just a two. <laughs> so you are swinging wildly. Oh, uh, my God. All these wasted 20s I had earlier. God damn Perception it. of everybody else. Everybody. The fire team included. In- including the researcher with the with yes. the flesh monster in his ear? Uh, no. Nope, not that one. That one already All did right. his rolls. Fucking uh, shit. <laughs> four rolls between 18 and 26. The fire team is 14? sexy. You all turn around and you see Stetson with a big tongue monster thing sticking in his ear. The head, by the Still way, Scott. has Still grown. Still Scott, not Stetson. No, me, no. Bobo. I Stet- thought it was me. Stetson no. has the head on his shoulders. Too. 
No, he's no, always said Stetson. I've been I, thought, Stetson. I didn't pay attention because I had a low perception roll. You did, but that's not what I was talking about. I'm great. You just don't I'm see good. it happening. You just yeah. don't see anything <laughs> happening. You're oblivious. Uh, you, re-roll. You know. uh, Stetson, that, that head almost has like uh, snow crab legs sticking out of the sides of it, and the tongue is just like up into his brain. But also the rest of you notice that all the rest of the body parts that weren't burned had come, obviously it was a diversionary tactic, and uh, they just rolled a better stealth in your passive perception, and they're all on Stetson. And Stetson hasn't noticed, but they're all like going into him. Oh, even the my little my little my little antsies. You don't see any. There's no antsies. There's no TTs down here. No, it's just a, an arm, a torso, a head, and a leg. Light it. <clears throat> or no, not Scott's a leg. Scott's gonna the dive gone. to the side to make room for the yep. fire team. Burn him. I'm gonna start. He was never my friend. <laughs> Burn him. Uh, so the handbook's clear. Burn him. Okay, and as. Uh, you guys are just about to burn him. The guy flip like pulls the tongue out of his head and looks straight towards you, and says, uh, "The Nalka will be coming for you, SCP Foundation." And then Can you repeat that the Nalka you said. <laughs> it's too late. The flames have <laughs> fucking shot down and they've lit uh, Stetson on fire as well as all the little creepy bits. Uh, and all of him lights on fire. Does Stetson do anything as he's on fire? Like, do you I'm dance around, cl- yeah, run away? I'm going 